Hi there, welcome back to a new tutorial. Um, I really enjoyed painting the golf course the last time. It turned out really well, didn't it? I hope you got some nice hints and tips from that about mixing greens, uh, lots of different tones of greens. And again, that little bit of a tint of pink in the background, it kind of really warms up the, the, the painting, doesn't it? So uh, I kind of enjoyed painting that all right. Now this week, this week, this week, I'm painting uh, a cherry blossom tree, um, a kind of a park scene with a footpath going through the park and some cherry blossoms on either side kind of coming down into the painting um, so it's going to be a very nice one again this week i'll have a bit of fun with this trying to get some um, pink foliage on these trees so i'm using again uh, the same as last time 20 inches by 8 canvas uh, primed um, i only gave this one one coat of primer now i would usually give it two to make it nice and smooth but i want to have a little bit of a bite on the canvas this time for this painting um, to create some lovely texture so just one coat of primer this time uh, it's just a normal undercoat a white undercoat water-based primer and i put in a good 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 dollop of pva glue and some water mix it all up together and it's nice and kind of watery like a tin tin cream and just give it two quick coats of that and it kind of seals the canvas and it takes the dryness out of the canvas as well it makes it nice and smooth for working on also i don't use any um mediums when i'm painting with oils apart from perhaps every now and again a little linseed oil mixed with the turpentine but for the most part i only use lin uh, turpentine for these tutorials pretty much um you can use a medium if you like i don't really feel the need to use a medium if the canvas is well primed um also i like the fact that they dry that little bit slower um for blending and you can come back the following day even and blend another color into it if you like so that's that's my setup uh, once again thank you all on patreon for your support it really means a huge amount and it just helps me pay for all these paints and canvases brushes that type of thing so it really really does mean a huge amount to me and thank you for that and if you would like to support me, it's over on Patreon. You'll see the link at the end of the video. And you can also support me on PayPal. And that's in the description as well underneath the video. If you like it that way. So, um, you know, everything helps. So thank you very, very much for that. Okay, are we ready to have a bit of fun with this? Cherry blossom trees in the park. I hope you like it. So don't go anywhere. All right, everyone. You should see the picture on your screen there. Um... Now the footpath on that is kind of going off to the right here, isn't it? I'm not sure about that. I'd, prefer, I'd rather have the footpath kind of coming into the front of the painting here. Now I'm going to use my artistic license, since this is just a tutorial. I'm going to change that slightly. So what I'm going to do is, um, now I know it kind of goes right uphill there, doesn't it? I'm not sure if that looks, um, if it's going to look right when it's finished. I might just keep it kind of straight here. Okay, off in the distance. Um, and what I might do is, let me just give it a scribble there. I could bring it up like this. I could bring the, the, kind, the land kind of slightly up like that. But I'm going to bring the footpath around the back of the land. And it's going to come around like this and disappear behind us okay so it's going to come out like this and then now it's probably a little bit wide there so let me just rub that out there and now it's really just a very loose impression uh, but i do want to get it some bit um try and create some perspective in this painting so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep adjusting this now until such time as I get it right and that is not too bad um, let me come down here slightly with this okay and I bring this one across like that so that's giving us a bit more um, perspective in the painting again So we could kind of just go with something like that. Yes, what do you think of that? With some nice 
trees at either side. Now I'm still I'm still not happy with that sketch, so I'm going to do it again. So you see, this is how we work. If I don't like something, I'm just going to rub it out and do it again. And I want to I really want to get this right because this is um, this is what's going to draw your eye in to the painting. That might be a little better, I would say. Okay, look, we'll just leave it at that. It's just a very loose sketch anyhow. Now we have some nice trees there, which we don't need to put in yet. I will just do, I'll put those in with the brush as I'm going. So that's kind of it. That's basically all we need to do. And let me name up my colors for you. We have a nice colorful palette today. I might add an extra one or two as I go, okay? Just bear that in mind. In fact, there's one more I forgot to put in. Right, we have Naples yellow, titanium white, cobalt blue, um, natal crimson, or alizarin crimson will do just as well. I have some cadmium yellow pale, some lamp black, burnt umber. I'm going to put a touch of burnt sienna there as well. And I'm going to put a touch of cadmium red. So we have two browns, two reds, and two yellows. And that should give us a nice, um, give us plenty to work with, to, to mix around and play around with the colors. So this is it, here we go. I'm gonna take my little flat brush, my stubby little green synthetic brush, nice cheap brush, Okay, nice and simple. It's probably a kid's brush, but I don't care. I'm I'm like a big kid myself, anyhow. Um, so with this, now looking at the photograph there, it's a very kind of a hmm, it's a very kind of a pastel mauve kind of a background on that. So I think I'll put that in a nice mauve kind of a color. So let's dip it into the turpentine, dry it on the tissue. So again, it's just damp. I'm going to take some white, and I'm going to take a touch of blue. And into that, I'm going to take a touch of this crimson color. We call it crimson. It's not a lizarin crimson. It would be slightly more ready than a lizarin crimson, if that makes sense. A lizarin crimson is kind of more on the pinky kind of a side. This is more ready side of pink. Now, I'm making a nice mauve there. You see? Let me just have a look at that. And again, I'm kind of planning ahead so what i'm doing now as i'm sitting here looking at this i'm planning ahead a couple of steps so the foliage on the trees here in the front is very kind of a bright whitey pink all right so bear that in mind so I'm, I, I want to put in a nice rich dark kind of a background so they'll stand out then later you see that's kind of i'm planning ahead so i want this to be relatively dark not too dark but at the same time uh, to create some contrast later on in the painting. Now I'm going to take a bit of black into that and a bit of red. And I'm going to put that colour here. Like so. Now I've just primed my canvas. It's only just dry. Um, so I'm hoping the paint really takes it properly. You'll know yourself if the canvas is not completely dry. If the primer is not completely dry. Because you start getting little patches here and there on your... Um, painting so that would tell you that it's not 100% kind of dry so just bear that in mind so now taking a little bit of blue and I'm mixing this in here so I'm mixing it all on the palette you see I'm just adjusting colors as I go um, see what you think there's a very light area in the center I want to leave that just for now um, I'm going to take some more blue more red and I'm going to go up here with that and I'm almost using just a dry brush now because all the moisture has gone out of the brush so it's pretty much just paint now let me just take some more of that crimson some more of the blue and I'll take a touch of the black and I really want this very very dark up here for these cherry blossoms to really show through later in the painting. Now I know I might be going a little over the top with the colour, but I think it will pay off. 
I know it's not that dark on the photograph, but I think it'll pay off later. So you can kind of make up your own sort of colours as you go as well. That's the nice thing about painting. Oh, I'm going to put a bit of blue. Um, let me just think here now for a sec. I'm trying to simplify everything. So I'm not going to worry too much about getting colours exactly the same. But again, just try and get them reasonably close. It is your painting after all, you can do what you like. So I'm putting this brush down and I'm going to take another one. A slightly smaller one. The next size down. Um, what is it? A number six flat. And these are all just normal cheap synthetic flat brushes. So let's take, now we have a nice rich uh, kind of an orangey yellowy colour creeping through here. A kind of a pinkyish tone to it. So I'm going to um, I'm going to mess around with some colours here, yeah? Let's take some Naples yellow, which is a beautiful yellow. And let's take a touch of cadmium yellow. Only a touch. And I might take some crimson. Again, a little touch of that. And I'm going to put that in there. And again, I'm using kind of slightly more red in this than I am using yellow because I don't want it going green so it's more on the ready side and that red now you see will mix nicely with this little bit of mauve that we have you see it and it's mixing there now nicely together picking up the colors and I'm just kind of flicking it around here and there and it's mixing away through you see isn't that a lovely rich colour? Now I'm, I've dirty colour on my brush here so I'm going to give it a quick dry on my tissue and I'll go back in then to that colour again, you see. And let me pick up again some yellow and again some red. I haven't touched my cadmium red yet by the way, I'm just using my crimson for now. And I'm going to Blend that in there into that lovely mauve. That's lovely, isn't it? So then you see, we have a nice kind of a glow in the centre of our painting. And I think that would really kind of draw the eye in. Again, it's not that much on the, on, on the photograph, as you can see. But I want to put in a good bit of it here. Because it's a lovely, lovely colour. Now I'm drying my brush again, giving it a quick clean. And I'm going to go into some cadmium yellow with some Naples yellow. And I'm going to put a hint of that just around the centre here. Just a hint of it. How does that look? That's a lovely colour, isn't it? So you can see now all these colours, the purples and mauves complement the yellows and pinks, you see. So that's why I used those two colours together. And that's kind of, that's what kind of caught my eye when I was looking at the photograph. It just caught my eye, that bit of warm colour there. Now, I want to put some distant trees off in the distance. So I'm going to just soften this very gently, just very, very, very gently. I do want to keep some of the texture on the canvas um, and some of the brush strokes, so I'm not going to lose those completely. There we are, just very, very slightly. And I'm going to take a small brush. A small, pointy brush. Let me see now, everyone. Yeah, that'll do. Little rigger, pointy rigger detail brush. And I'm going to take some, um, hmm, there's some very bright kind of pinky trees there, which I want to get in and I'm just taking some white, some yellow and a little red to make a kind of a salmony colour and I'm just going to suggest those trees off in distance. Now unfortunately for the next few minutes I have to do a voiceover on this part because the audio never came out on the video. Why I do not know. Um, so it's only, for, it's only for a couple of minutes. I hope you don't mind. Um, so I'm just going to suggest some of these um, bright trees now off in the distance 
So the sunlight is catching these trees. It's kind of coming through the forest and catching the ends of the trees. Um, and that's going to create a nice light source off in the distance then, you see. Now, they need a little bit of shadow. So I'm going to take a touch of black with a touch of that bluey kind of a plummy colour. And just on the left hand side, just a little, just suggest a little shadow just down on the left. And that will help, um, that, that little shadow will really help bring out the lights and the highlights. So everything that has a very bright highlight should have a very rich dark also. It does really help and it brings the painting to life as well. So um, just keep suggesting little, small little shadows just here and there. I'm not going overboard with it. Uh, it's just a little and it's very off, very, very far off in the distance. So next we have some, um, I'm going to put in some darker trees just on the right hand side of that. Um, and there's going to be some lovely kind of bluey, pinky foliage as well on those trees which I'm going to plan in ver very soon. Uh, but look, I just add a little touch of yellow and white just to the ends of those trees again, just to really catch that sunlight. And this is a lovely painting to try if you're just kind of sitting around at home and you've not, you don't have much to do. Just, you know, get some brushes, get some paints and mix up some colours, have a bit of fun with some colours. Uh, this is the type of painting you want because it's really full of colour and there's a lot of different um, textures in the painting and you can do a lot with just a couple of colours as well. Now you don't have to copy my colours exactly if you don't want to, you can just make up your own colours. But I'm kind of just trying to get the sense of warmth in the painting and um, just kind of show you about shadows in a landscape, that type of thing. and painting cherry blossom trees. So here we go with some brown paint and a little red. I'm just going to strike the canvas straight up there with those to suggest some darker trees coming closer to us. And it's just very, very loose. You see, I'm just flicking the brush up very, very quickly. I'm not even going to worry too much about branches and all that type of stuff because we do have a bit of foliage on these. So as they come closer to us then they're going to get slightly thicker and that will give the impression of some distance and depth in the painting. So there we go. And again And again, we have some lights on these. So a little bit of that pinky kind of color, that bright pinky color. And just put that on the right hand side of these trees, just here and there. It's kind of hit and miss, if you know what I mean. So it's not solid lines all the way. It's just kind of a little dab here and a little dab there. But it's just on the bottom half of the trees, really. And these are very, very simple tutorials for you to follow. They, I'm trying to make them as easy as I can, really. Now, I'm just softening those down from the top down and even from the bottom up as well uh, with a soft brush, just to help them sort of disappear into the background slightly. Very, very, very slightly. Okay? Create a nice kind of a misty feel. And I'm just pulling the base of those down as well, just slightly. So it's looking quite nice now, isn't it? Nice contrast there between the light in the centre and the dark on the other side. It's very, very nice contrast. Um, now, a very dark colour. I'm going to mix up some foliage colour and take some blue and some red with a little dab of white. And there's kind of a hint of mauve kind of foliage just there on the right hand side. So I want to get that in. So I'm adding a little bit of white into this. And yeah, that's not too bad. I think I'll go with that. Um, just a dab here and there with the corner of the brush, okay? And I'm holding the brush at a slight angle you can, so you can see the foliage is falling downwards slightly. So I just dab, dab, dab with that all the way along. 
and a little more blue and these colors you see are going to complement the rich orange in the middle so the blues and the pinks and the oranges really complement each other now i'm going to try some pink and some white let's try and get some of that in and I'm just kind of dabbing it around very loosely here and there now i'm going to go right across the canvas with this um, so I'm going to mix a slightly, maybe slightly pinkier colour for the centre and right across then I'm going to go with that. Now we do want this nice and bright to stand up from that dark background, you see. That's it, you see that's much nicer now, isn't it? And it's a very, very loose suggestion of some foliage in the distance. So I'm going to go right across here now. I'm not going to cover too much of the lovely orange in the centre. I'm going to leave some of that. But I'm just going to put some foliage over there to show this foliage off in the distance. Now bear in mind, a lot of this foliage on the left hand side will be covered by those big thick trees and the foliage on those trees. So you only have to be very loose with this. Um, I suppose I'm just kind of creating texture more than anything else. It's just to create some texture on the painting. And it's just a nice, fast, effective way of painting foliage. I find. Of course there are different brushes you can use um, and you can experiment with different brushes but I just find this is a nice quick way of getting foliage on and it's very, very kind of a natural uh, foliage as well. So um, yeah it's going well. So look already we have some lovely texture on our canvas right there don't we? Just fantastic and that lovely light in the centre really pops out. So trees in the foreground here, we're going to have big, big dark trees now going right up into that colour. Um, so next, 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 I'm going to start with some greens, I think. And perhaps try and get some greens in on this foreground area here. Yeah, why not? Okay, let's take some of that yellow, some cadmium yellow, and a touch of cobalt blue, make a rich green. And a touch of white just to brighten it slightly because it's going to be slightly brighter off in the distance let's try that now first and see if we can adjust it as we need to see I put a little touch more blue into that and let's just fill that colour in and I don't want this too dry now you can hear it scraping on the canvas well you can but I can hear I, I can see it scraping on the canvas there it's very very rough so add a little bit of tops into this to help it really flow nicely. Now I took a touch of black just there, just to darken it very, very slightly. And I'm following the direction of the hill or the land. So I'm pulling my brush strokes kind of up at a slight angle. And that's telling you then which way the grass is falling. Does that make sense? So always follow the direction of your land. So you see, Move right across there and just go very loosely around the footpath. Don't be too worried about going through the footpath. Um, as it comes closer to you, then it's going to be getting slightly richer and richer in colour and slightly darker also. So bear that in mind. So go up into the base of those trees there, just kind of wiggle it around and fill that right down then, down to your line. And that's a nice warm green, isn't it? So I've taken more black and more yellow. And you see I'm making it just slightly darker now as it comes down. Just a little. Blend that all nicely together then. And we're going to start getting some nice rich darker colour in there now, just at the bottom of that so I took a touch of that warm brown and just kind of softening it through just at the end of that where it meets the footpath and that's kind of creating that little verge then little grass verge um, so we're going well aren't we thank you so much for all your support it's really really appreciated and I really really do mean that um, I know it can be kind of, it can be 
a slight hindrance sometimes, I suppose, you know, if you're supporting someone on, say, like Patreon or something like that, I know it's a big kind of a commitment to worry about a monthly kind of a thing. So I added a PayPal me um, link on the description underneath the video. And it just makes it easier for you guys. Just if, you know, if you want to support me just a once off or something, um, just click on the link and you can just pledge something on that. Anything at all, I'd be very, very grateful for whatever support you can give me. So that's just another way of helping me out. That's all it is. Um, so I hope you don't mind that. So here we go, nice and dark. Nice, rich, dark colour down at the front here. So some blue, little black, little touch of cyanide. Nice, dark, rich green. Look at that. And pull that right across all the way down. Add a touch of burnt cyanide to your green. That'll make it nice and warm and earthy. Now, big broad brush strokes swooping right across the field here, this grass. Okay, like so. And let me see, what I might do now at this stage is, um, boom, 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 boom. okay, I will take a fan brush. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a fan brush and I'm gonna get some more yellow on my palette. Cadmium yellow pale. And I'm going to create some texture on the, on the grass. So here we go, a fan brush, a dry fan brush, some cadmium yellow. Let's take a touch of Naples yellow. And off in the distance where it's bright, I'm going to dab some of that along. So the sunlight is kind of bursting in between these trees. And I'm just dabbing it straight across, you see? And this creates a lovely texture, lovely grassy texture. And we can put a little bit just here. Isn't that nice? Let's do the same right across here, yes? So some cadmium right, some Naples yellow, and perhaps a touch of white. And I'm going to follow those lines slightly, and it's going to follow the curve of the land as well, you see? It's going to go up there into the land. Now, you could just even drag it like this and create some light on that grass. You see? So just have a bit of fun. Mess around with it. Let's try a bit here. Look. There, look. See? A little bit of fun. Very good for your stress. Take out all the stress. Now, I'm going to create some little bits of grass just here and there. Some little texture. Just here and there. With this. And you see, that's why I painted this dark, so this nice bright colour will stand out lovely against it. Um, I might even try some little flicks with the grass. So, let's put some little flicks in here and there, look. That's quite nice, isn't it? And then, as it goes further and further away, they'll get smaller and smaller and just disappear into the grass there, you see? Isn't that lovely? So, the next thing I want to do now is I just want to add a little tiny bit of shadow for those trees. Because they will be casting a slight shadow. So, let's take some black with a touch of that yellow. And with that colour, between the lights, give a very gentle dab. You see? Nice gentle dab of that dark colour. Dab, 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 dab. And look, you could even go up into the tree slightly and that will sit the tree down then. So let's do the same on the other side here. 
Let's create a couple of little darks. Shadows are your friends. Isn't that what they say? Don't be afraid of the dark. No. So I'm fairly happy with that. Now just along the end here, I'm gonna put some burnt umber. So take some burnt umber with a touch of black. And I'm just gonna give that a little edge. Small, small little edge with a little fan brush. Just flick it up very gently. And then I'm going to just sort of soften that back in to the grass there, you see? And doesn't that give it a bit more depth? There. And right, let's put a little bit here. So we've created a lovely grassy kind of a park, a parkway. Isn't that nice? Now I want to tint some of the grass. I was telling you earlier about tinting the grass. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take some of this kind of lovely orangey colour, pinkish orangey colour, and I'm going to just put a tiny bit of it just here and there. So let me take some of that crimsony pink, some yellow. Now it's a little dirty, it's a little on the dirty side. So let's try Naples yellow with some of that crimson and a touch of that yellow. And with that in your brush, I'm just going to give a very gentle dab of that just here and there. And you probably cannot see this very well, but I can see it here and it looks gorgeous. There we see. Just a little bit here and there off in the distance. And that'll do fine. Yep, I'd be happy with that. Now we have some trees, don't we? Let me just look at the photograph here I have. And let's see how we're getting on. Um, right, we're not looking too bad. I think we'll stick this footpath in, will we? Let's do it. Come on, let's do it. Okay, small flat brush. Dampen it slightly. And I'm going to make a nice soft grey for this. Let's take a little touch of blue. And let's take a touch of red. A bit too much red now and that, isn't there? Let's take a touch of yellow. Or white, sorry. A touch of white. So a little bit of red, a bit of blue, a bit of white. That'll give us our mauve colour that we have and into that I'm going to take a touch of um, burnt umber so that'll give us a warm kind of a browny grey so nice and thick here now folks nice thick paint let's try that just wiggling this now from side to side Filling in that path. And as it comes closer to you, you could add a bit more blue. And I know now, by the way, on the photographs it's much brighter and paler, um, but I want to get some nice rich colour in this. There we are. Um, I'll take a slightly bigger brush just to get this covered that little bit quicker. So a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, a bit of burnt umber. And you see, my canvas is still kind of a little bit on the dry side, but I don't mind. Now, there we go. And you could even pull some of the green down into it as well. That would help complement the footpath. So that kind of ties the colours in together then, you see. Now, how is that looking? Now, I'm going to add a touch of dark colour here. So maybe pick out a tiny bit of black. And let's just soften a little bit of black in just here in this corner. 
Okay. And that gives it that extra bit of, it pushes everything else off in the distance, doesn't it? And then I'm going to take my smaller brush and put some light up there. Because there'll be some light catching the footpath, won't there? So let's take, um, this is fun, I like, this is a lovely colourful painting, isn't it? Let's take some white, with a touch of pink. And let's, uh, let's try some of that. I'll go a bit brighter than that, I think. So a bit of that pinky colour, and let's take a touch of Naples yellow too. And let's just pull some of that across here and there. There we go. I might even take a touch of cadmium yellow. Yes, that's nice. Let's take some Naples yellow with some of the pink. I'm just picking up warm colours, that's all I'm doing. There you see. That Naples yellow is a lovely colour with, with the red. It's a beautiful, warm colour. There, that's quite nice, isn't it? So we leave it like that for now. And what I might do is get some real dark branches in. So this is lovely practice for you now, um, to practice some real branches and painting twigs, that type of thing. So I'm going to take a very dark colour, some brown and some black. I might take a touch of blue and I'm going to go along here and put some very dark branches in. And again, this is all very wet, so if you want to leave it dry you can, by all means. But you don't have to. I like painting wet into wet like this. So there we go. Uh, let's bring a couple down like this. And again, I'm just being very spontaneous with this now. Just stick them in here and there. I find sometimes if you sit and you stare and you look at something for too long, it just becomes... it. <sighs> It's just not fun anymore, I don't think. Just go for it. If you make a mistake, you can just rub it with your tissue and blend all the colours back in together again, you see. So don't be shy. Now let's put a couple coming out of the floor here. Okay. A little shadow off of that. And let's, hmm, let's have a look at this now. There's a couple of nice kind of ones off here in the distance. And let's put a little shadow along here. So the shadows will always bring something to life, won't they? And I want to give these a little stronger shadow just here and there. Yep, there we go, quite nice. And also I want to hit them with some highlights as well. So I'm going to take some of this bright colour, this yellowy pinky colour, and I'm going to just, here and there, see, little dab here and there. And also, these branches, a little tiny small highlight just here and there. This is good fun, isn't it? Now, while well, I have a dark colour on my brush, so a bit of brown, for example, I'm just going to go along here and there on that footpath, just at the edge, and just suggest a little dark edge, okay? And the same on this side. Perhaps a bit off in the distance just for a little bit of detail. No, that's fine, that'll do absolutely fine. You don't need to do no more to this. Um, 
over to these big trees these big guys here we go and i'm going to switch to a slightly bigger round for that and let's take some burnt umber they're very browny rich brown color so burnt umber and burnt sienna let's take some of that i want to start off with that color we have a lovely one just here don't we so let's get that in that comes up and it's off to twist around i'm not copying it exactly now i'm just using it as a reference but they are quite nice the way they kind of twist and into all different shapes what's that one there there's another one through here i'll just make this one my own i think And always make the, the trunks and the base of the trees nice and thick so that they look like they can hold all of that foliage up. And then I'm going to switch to my small brush. I make up a nice watery mix there now of burnt umber and black. And I'm going, in fact, we'll just take some black as well into that look. Nice thick black paint. Now come down one side like that. And let's go crazy with these branches, yes? This is fun now, I like this. This is my, I love painting like this. It was nice and free. And you're, you're not following certain rules or anything like that. You can just put branches wherever you like. And be nice and free with this. There you see? And that's coming on nicely, isn't it? That's a very wild looking tree. Very sporadic. Is that the word we're looking for? Sporadic. Very wild. And just take a couple of little twigs on here and there. Again, you don't have to go over the top with this because we're putting lots of foliage over this, you see, um, later on. Okay, I think we leave that one as it is and we put some light down on the outside here. So I'm going to take some burnt sienna and I'm going to take some cadmium red, or not cadmium red, I beg your pardon, some of this crimson and I might take a touch of Naples yellow and I'm going to put that down there. Nice warm colour. So the sun is coming through and it's catching the front of that tree. So, some Naples yellow, some red, and a little bit here and there. Then I'm going to soften it in slightly. And I'm going to take some Naples yellow and put some of that just down the end there. And soften that in. So that's a nice bit of light catching the base of that tree, isn't it? Now, let's put a touch of cadmium yellow on that as well. There. And that's a nice warm highlight, isn't it? Now, we'll come back and do all these little highlights again later. Don't worry about... Don't worry if they're not absolutely... Perfect. All right. There. Now we're going to move on to this one. Let's take some more dark color. Some nice burnt umber. And a little touch of burnt sienna. Plenty of turpentine in this. And let's just put in some of these branches. Hey! Let's 
So let's just keep putting these in here. Plenty of fun with it. And sometimes they'll even cut in front of one another as well, you see. Now I know this looks a little funny. There, let's do something about this. There we go. That's better. It's a bit more natural, doesn't it? No. That's that one. Then I want to take some black. Nice thick black. And let's give this a nice bit of shadow there. So you see the shadows really bring these to life, don't they? And then let's go for our highlight color. Let's take some burnt sienna with a touch of Naples yellow. And let's put some of that in here. Let's go there again. I'll take some burnt sienna with a little white this time. Oh, that's it. I'm going to blend them together very gently. So if we're giving a tree a shadow like this, okay, let's just use our fan brush. Let's just take some black, a touch of yellow, so we have a dark green, and go from the base of the tree out. And look, a lovely shadow. And I'm following the direction of this land as well, you see? See, just like that. Now, I will give that some very bright highlight just at the base here. So just some Naples yellow, perhaps a touch of cadmium as well. And just a couple of flicks down, just to suggest that we're catching the light coming from the right hand side. You see? And you can even go in there with some yellow and some white if you like. See? That gives it a nice bright highlight, doesn't it? And I'm going to soften that very gently my fan brush, my clean fan brush, dab that very gently up. There. That's much better, isn't it? So I'm just going to hit that now with a little bit of light as well, just on the branches. So I'm going to take some Naples yellow and a touch of that pink. And I'm going to put a touch of that nice warm colour just here and there. Again, bearing in mind that a lot of this will be covered with foliage. So I'm only just a little, see, just here and there, that's all. And that's fine. So I think what I might do now at this stage is put some foliage on these and then uh, we'll do the front tree here, right in the front. So uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. So there's a number of ways of doing this. Um, we could use a knife. We could use a brush. Um, I might try this knife for a change. Will we try some knife work? Yes? It might be uh, something different. Let's try it. So we've got a nice light pink now for this. Let's just scrape off some of that white and let's find a nice clean spot. This bit of palette here. 
I'll just take a bit of that red. So that crimsony pink there now with that. And with that on my palette, fully loaded up, I'm going to just start scraping that on here and there. Okay? Um, in fact, let's go slightly darker than that. And that's creating some nice texture, isn't it? And let's come along here now and scrape some of that on. And this is just so easy. I'm just being very kind of random with the knife now, just scraping it on here and there, letting the canvas take it off. And we could even carry it on over here as well. You see? So that's the knife. And we could do this with a brush as well. Will we try a brush? Or you could use a fan brush or something. I think, I think, I think, I think, I might try it with this brush here. So I'm just gonna give that a quick, a quick wipe, um, quick clean and a good wipe on some clean tissue. Just take off some of that green. And, um, this now is where the painting will really kind of come to life. So I'm just going to, with a dry brush, let's take some of that red again, and some of the white. And I haven't mixed it too much. I'm going to just go along here and start dabbing very gently, and creating some texture. So the impression of some uh, foliage on that tree, you see? And I'll come down here like this. So this now is all going to be behind this big tree here in the front. So that's why I'm doing it here now. It's all going to be just thick foliage behind that tree. And we could even go over on the other side as well. Just put a little hint of it just here and there. You see? So let's leave that for now. Um, what you could do, like, you know, even with a small brush, you could take some thick paint on its own and you could just go in and create some kind of bright leaves just on their own. So you could put, like, look, a couple of flicks here and there in close groupings. So group them together very closely and that kind of gives it just that extra bit of detail, I suppose. You see? So what I'm going to do now is at this stage, I, there's one more tree at the back there which I want to get in. So I'm going to put that in. So let's just take some thin brown paint and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to just put that in like so. Again, be very, very free with this. Just enjoy it, that's the main thing. And a little shadow coming off of it like that. And let's put a little blue on the back of that for some dark shade. And then, let me just soften that there. Then I'm gonna take some of the light color for the front. That's just catching a bit of sunlight there, isn't it? Um, and then I'm going to, in fact, you know what, I might try my fan brush. Do you know what? I have a small fan brush here, which I might try. And let's try and put some 
little foliage in front of that. There we go. And that just kind of pushes it off then into the distance a little, doesn't it? So the next stage I'm going to do now is this big, big, big tree right here. And I'm going to get that in. So I'm going to take again some um, burnt umber and some black. So it's quite dark. I might even take a touch of red just to make it warm, slightly warmer. And we have a nice big thick tree here, don't we? And they just sort of come out and go all over the place, don't they? Like a load of snakes. And cut through that one right there. And we have another one. It kind of comes up and it falls over like that. And we have another couple that come up like this. And this one is going to be fairly big. It's going to come right up and go out of the painting. This tree. So I'm going to make it nice and thick. And at this stage I'm just going to take my small brush. And I'm going to go into some black. And I'm going to take a touch of blue. And I'm going to make it really dark just on the back end of this tree. So there we go now. And I'm going to go very dark then with the front branches on this tree. So a little bit of black and a little bit of blue. I want the blue to kind of tone it down very slightly. And the blue will kind of help give it more depth and bring those shadows out that little bit more as well and I'm going to go right up here now with this one and this one here is going to go right across so that's a very <laughs> very um, out of control kind of a tree isn't it I tell you something. Now this one here. You could now let this dry. It might be easier for you to let it dry for a while and then um, attempt all these little twigs and stuff once it's dry because it can be quite difficult to get all of these in when it's very, very wet like this. I'm kind of used to doing it this way. You might find it more difficult to get all these fine details in when this canvas is very wet. But um, look, I leave it up to yourselves. I just like working wet into wet because the colours kind of mix and pick up each other and they kind of help each other along, if you understand what I mean. It's just how I've always painted and, you know... Do you know what? It's probably a bad habit, but it's just a habit that I've developed over the years. And um, it's just kind of stuck with me, I'll be honest. So, let me get some more black. And then go right up there with that black. And then I'm going to start lightening now some of the areas here on the tree where the light is catching. So I'm going to take some burnt sienna with some Naples yellow. And I'm just going to start lightening some areas of the tree. So let's bring this one down here. And I might take some white, a little hint of pink on it, and just kind of show some of the highlights there on that. And again, some burnt sienna with some Naples yellow. And let's take a bit of pink actually as well. And I'm going to go 
very light then with some burnt sienna, some pink and some white. And then suggest some of the bark on this tree here. And again, I'm going to just pull it down into the grass there very gently, you see? So it's almost kind of sitting down in the grass, isn't it? Um, what I'm going to do at this stage is just take some blue and a little red. So I'm going to make a very dark shadowy colour. And I'm going to give these some of that dark shadow. You see? Particularly down on the roots. And what I might actually do, in fact, as well, is I'll take some of that colour with some white. And I'll put some of that in the shadow also. And again, that's a kind of a luminous shadow colour. You see? That just gives it more depth, I think. And perhaps we could even do the same on this one, just slightly. You see, that, that kind of works, doesn't it? Um, okay, I'm going to give that some shadow on the grass. So I'm going to take some black with some yellow. And I'm going to go right up there with some dark colour. Look at that. And I'm going up into the tree as well, you see? So it's all kind of softening now into the tree, disappearing. And I need to fix this because I came down there just a little bit too far, didn't I? So let's take some white, perhaps a little Naples yellow. Now, it's a bit on the muddy side but it'll do we'll get away with that you see there we go that's sorted that how are we looking guys pretty good I have to say I'm loving this glow just in the centre. It's really stunning, isn't it? Now I'm going to give some dark grasses just here and there. With some burnt umber, perhaps a bit touch of black. And you could even with some black, just give the footpath very, very, very light. It's almost like a light dusting of pebbles just around the front here very very lightly you see just here and there that adds a little texture to that and what i'm going to do at this stage is just clean my fan brush for a minute let me give this a really good clean here and then i'm going to take some white some titanium white and i'm going to mix up a nice rich pink now to cover this tree and i'm going to use this first then i go to my knife okay so let's try a nice rich pink on that there that's quite nice now isn't it And this is a lovely warm painting. You see, it's very difficult to distinguish the leaves because there's just so much of it there. It's difficult to tell where one tree begins and the other one finishes, you see. Um, so you can be very kind of free with this type of a painting. Now, you can put some on the floor as well. Let's suggest a couple of leaves 
just here down on the floor because it is a very very dense area so you're going to get some bits of leaves here and there and then you could switch to your knife and put some thicker suggestions here and there and perhaps even take a touch of blue yes might be quite nice I'm going to do the same over here, look. And it's just a lot of fun painting like this. It really is. So let's stand back and just have a quick look at that. So that's not bad, is it? Now I will run some of my branches across in front of some of these leaves. All right, so for example here, and let's bring one or two across here. and now let's just take some white and I want to just pop a few bits of white in just here and there what about some people walking would that be nice do you think I don't know a few people walking along the footpath perhaps yes we'll try it let's try it first of all I've just seen one thing I want to just warm up there just this there that's better um, let's try a few people walking shall we uh, okay colors what color do you think um, bearing in mind we have a lovely orange here I would think something hmm something nice let's go for red let's go for bright red so um people when i paint people i think of carrots okay i know that sounds a little bit strange doesn't it um but think of the shape of a carrot so i'm gonna say here so that's a carrot would you agree and then let's paint the bottom half of that carrot black you see and it's that to be a little bit darker I think and then we give that carrot a little shadow like so let's go a bit darker with that there we go and we'll have to give that carrot a head won't we like so then perhaps a slight highlight And that's one person walking through the forest. Shall we give that person um, a companion? Maybe. I don't know. What do you think? He looks a bit lonely all by himself, doesn't he? 
let's give him someone to, to walk along with. A bit of white, nice bright white with a touch of yellow. And that person is going to have their arm around this guy like that, you see? Just like so. And let's get some Burnside Enna for the bottom half of this person. And let's get some brown for the head. And give the head a little tail, yes? Just like that. So there, how was that looking? And a little highlight just on the outside edge. And then, give this guy a little hat, a little cap or something. Like so. And that is pretty much the end of that. I'm going to just suggest one or two little leaves here and there. Um, it is a kind of a forest scene, so there will be a lot of little bits and pieces around on the floor. And you know what we could do actually to complement all the pinks in this? Let's take a touch of blue, okay? A small, small, small touch of blue with some white. And let's just dab those in just here and there. So they could be like little blue flowers just to complement the pink that's there. I think it would really help. Okay? Just like that. And I would call that finished. So let me sign this down here in the dark. S. Conway. And there we are. So there, that turned out quite nice, didn't it? That's a lovely little cherry blossom scene with some... No, it doesn't have to look exactly like cherry blossoms. Um, as long as you have a bit of fun and try different colours. Okay, it doesn't really have to look like a cherry blossom tree. It's a beautiful little scene with some cherry blossom trees in the forest with a little pathway. Some nice pink foliage on the trees to suggest cherry blossom. Um, it's just nice nice easy techniques that you can try yourself at home so i hope you i, I really hope you enjoyed this today nice colorful painting i think um again thank you so much for all your support everything really helps it really 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 does um so i'm very 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 thankful for that and i I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying these tutorials um and getting some hints and tips from them so don't forget send me on your work for analysis let's say for my opinion i'd love to see what you're doing um, at stephencommer12 at gmail.com so send all your send your stuff to me I'd, I'd love to see it see how you're getting on um, and Patreon and also PayPal if you want to support me thank you very very much so I'm going to stick this in a frame and I'll take a photograph and show you what it looks like with a frame I think it's going to be stunning so guys ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for tuning in again for my tutorial and I will see you very very soon so don't go anywhere.